coaches. This is Coach Simpson at Southside Charter High School in Batesville, Arkansas. This is my contact information. Uh, for those of you who may not know me, I've got my own uh, website, uh, a lot of football resources that y'all are welcome to. I'll give you a real quick background on me, and then I'll get into what I'll be talking about uh, today. Uh, I've now been coaching in Arkansas for the past nine seasons. I took over a program there that was uh, oh, in two seasons and plus, so they'd really struggled, and uh, we've we've managed to kind of get going the right direction. We've won the conference through the last three seasons and moving the right direction. Still got a long way to go. Uh, before then, I actually coached in the state of Alabama. I was a head coach in Montgomery at the age of 27, and so I've been doing this for a little bit uh, and had some success in, in both states. And and uh, with success, you also have uh, failures. And so I've had some times where I've had to learn and kind of push through. And in the, in the middle of all of that, we developed our own kind of brand of offense um, that is based upon uh, really three or four different uh, offenses that we've blended together. Uh, we call it the gun TRPO system. So we've taken what we consider to be the best of the wing T, which will be a lot of what you're looking at. The blocking scheme on this specific play <clears throat> is wing T base. We've taken what we think is the best of the power running game. And then we've taken the best what we think is the RPO world. I'm a big Noel Mazzoni fan. And uh, so we've taken a lot of his concepts and put them inside, kind of blended them up and come up with our own flavor of what we call the gun T RPO. So today we're going to talk about the counter game. Any play that we put in, if you guys have ever heard me speak before, um, I want to get as much, we call it bang for our buck, which is funny because we run the buck sweep a lot, but really that wasn't the pun. Uh, the idea was I'm going to put a play in, uh, a blocking scheme in, how much can I get from that? So that'll be the whole theme of today's kind of session. We run the double handoff the way the wing tee runs it, but I wanted to kind of take it beyond where the wing tee went and incorporate the RPO game, incorporate the power spread type game with it and kind of go from there. So that's what we're going to be kind of working through. The basic blocking scheme for us is old school wing tee counter, double handoff. If you don't know the wing tee terms, gap down backer, it's pretty simple. Basically, you're blocking the inside gap. Uh, if there's nobody there, you're going to work to linebacker. So basically, they're going to block the inside gap to head up. So if you look at the screen, quick tackle here for us, it's going to block anyone, any defense alignment in the gap, any defense alignment head up. If there's nothing there, he goes to linebacker. Same thing with the quick guard. Same thing with the center. He's blocking back. Okay, that's a difficult block sometimes. They want to block that head up nose. They got to block back on this play. Our strong guard is going to pull kick. Whatever shows up, sometimes it's an outside linebacker, sometimes it's a five technique. Whatever shows up, he's going to kick. Our strong tackle is going to step hinge. Uh, if there's a guy way inside here, we may cut him. But basically, we're going to block inside gap. And if nothing shows up, we'll hinge backside. And then our tight end is going to pull and wrap through the hole. Okay, uh, Basically, like a lead blocker. That's the blocking scheme. And we wanted to use this with as many different looks as possible. So the, the old school wing T way is the way I'm going to go first. And then we'll walk through it with kind of our flavors and our blends and that kind of stuff. So, again, here's a blocking scheme for it. Uh, quick tackle, quick guard, and the center are all basically blocking down. Uh, strong guard will pull kick. Strong tackle will step hinge. And then the tight end wraps. And the reason we really like the tight end wrapping for us uh, is because if we decide to RPO off of this, the only guy who's immediately going upfield on a wrap block is a tight end who is eligible. So you won't get called nearly as many times for lineman downfield. Uh, we also like it because in our offense, we don't flop, uh, don't flop linemen. We have a strong side, we have a quick side. And traditionally for us, our strong tackle is not the most athletic guy. So that it lets him stay home. This upcoming season, he's a little more athletic for us. So we'll have a switch call in there where we can pull the guard and the tackle. So you could run it either way, but the premise is the same. 
One quick thing I want to give you guys, if you do pulls, so if, you, if you're like us and you do a lot of pull kick, pull wraps, uh, we built these little PVC pipe hurdles, uh, I think probably this past season really, and they've really become something we enjoyed a ton. We run them with buck sweep. So we pull, we run a lot of buck sweep, so pull kick, pull wrap, but we'll also use the same setup with the counter game. So we'll get our, our guard to pull kick and our tight end will wrap and we'll have the little hurdle set up right here where he'll pull to wrap. It gives them very good aiming points and it allows them uh, to pull through and, and not slow down. That was the main two things we're looking for. If we pull kick or pull wrap, we want our guys full speed. We tell them that we'll get our back right up on them. So, uh, you know, if they whiff on a block, our running back should be so close to them, he can squeeze through as well. So you'll see that in a little, a couple of these clips. Here it is again. This is actually with buck sweep. But we do the same exact drill uh, with our tight ends. We would put our, our guard and our tight end. We'd have a pull kick and we'd have a pull wrap while we're working backfield action. So real simple thing, a big plug. We do a lot of pull kick, a lot of pull wrap. Obviously, we do it with counter as well as with buck, and we do it with our uh, inside kind of power play also. So real low investment for you as coaches and real good thing. And then one thing I want to point out, this actually is a buck sweep drill, but I want to show you one thing that we've kind of added to it that we really like. If I can get back to it, make, make my technology work. We'll go slow here. We wrap a towel in the wrap, the wrapping guard, or if it's counter, the wrapping tight ends, uh, shorts. So as he kind of comes through here, you'll see our running back is so close to him, you can't even see him. And the way we get him to do that is we put the towel in the shorts of the wrapper. There it is right there. So our back will pull the towel out of the wrapping tight ends shorts. And what we're trying to accomplish on that is we want it to look like this to a defense. So as our running back is coming through, you can't even see the back. He's so tight on the wrapping guard that you can't see him. And that allows our guys a lot of times to squeeze through very, very small creases that we're able to create, okay? Um, of course, now my PowerPoint's gonna freeze up on me. So give me just a second and I'll get back to, get back to where I can get it going. Okay, guys, so that's the basic blocking scheme. And so the reason I showed you that is because as I walk through this stuff, we can run that same blocking scheme with a lot of different window dressing. So the whole point of this presentation from this point on is how do you get the most from one blocking scheme? That's kind of what we're all about in our offense. We want one blocking scheme and to get as many things as possible from those. Here's the traditional way we would run it. So if we just called counter, this is what it would look like, okay? Same blocking scheme I showed before. So nothing is different here. We're gonna give the ball to the running back. The running back for our offense is lined up. Uh, his heels are on our quarterback's toes, which looks exactly like buck sweep to a defense because it's kind of a sister play. If you know much about wing T, uh, it's basically a part of the series, the buck sweep series. Uh, he will cross the quarterback's face and take the ball with open hands, so it's not a handoff. He actually will take the ball from the quarterback and then he will hand it underneath to the pulling wing. Couple key points to the wing, if you're running it traditional, he needs to take a balance step to come back, a counter step. Then we tell him he's playing chicken uh, with our running back and at the last second, he's gonna duck underneath. And the reason we do that is we've gotta get a little bit of depth here because as much as we would like to say we don't get any penetration, you know, the world we live in, sometimes that doesn't happen. So he's got to get deep enough to get out of any possible penetration that comes through. And I like him deep enough to see the hole, you know, because he's going to follow that tight end. But a lot of times if he's too close to the line, he won't see where to cut. So getting him a little bit deeper helps. What you do with your quarterback here is up to you. Years we've had a pretty thick athletic quarterback. We've actually had him go and assist in the blocking scheme here. He'll hand it, run over here, and pick up whatever may show up. Years I don't want to get him hurt, I've told him to hand it and kind of jog out of the way because we don't want him to get hit, okay? So that's just a couple of different things you can do. Here it is for backfield action. QB to running back is a take. That's important because you try to hand it off in a pocket, and then by the time he gets the ball to hand it back, it's not going to work. 
So double handoff for us, it's going to be a take and then a hand. Uh, cute running back should have his heels on the quarterback's toes, which for us is how we would run buck sweep. Or if you guys don't do buck sweep, it could be how you run outside zone where you're trying to get him wide. Wing back needs to take a counter step, like I mentioned, uh, play chicken and go underneath. And then depending on what you want to do with your quarterback, you can get him involved. Notice I have not drawn up our wide receivers because we tag everything with our wide receivers. So uh, in the traditional way we would run this, they would block number one and number two. So they would block the outside linebacker with your slot receiver, and they would block the corner with your number one. Uh, we also do a lot of RPOs, which I'll be walking through in this, where they do different things. Okay, so here it is, traditional way against a normal defense. Okay, uh, so we should get gap down backer blocking here, gap down backer blocking here, gap down backer, pull kick should be here, step hinge, pull wrap. So what should happen is he should be blocking to a linebacker. There's nobody in the gap and nobody down. He ought to be working towards this linebacker right here. Our guard ought to be blocking right here on the nose, okay? And then our center ought to be blocking, checking the nose and then going backside. Our strong tackle will probably end up on this defensive lineman. He'll step hinge, will pull kick, probably this wide five technique right here. And then our tight end probably will end up on the play side linebacker, depending on where he moves. We're going to have a take right here with 23. 22 will get the ball coming underneath. Six doesn't do it on this play because I checked it last night, but he should be blocking that guy. And then our receiver should be blocking number one. Okay. So here it goes, full speed. You can see how our running back is actually literally grabbing the jersey of the tight end. Tight end doesn't do a great job on this, but our running back does a great job of forcing him to block, getting that hand on him and hiding behind him. I'm going to run it real slow for you guys to kind of look and I'll freeze as we go. So here you got a great wall early on with our linemen. This is a great wall right here. We do a great job on the kick block. On the kick, you've got to get your head on the upfield shoulder, okay? We do a very good job at running back of getting depth. He has great depth right here where he can see. And then as our tight end wraps through, he needs to run full speed. He kind of stops because there's nobody there, which happens often for us. He needs to run full speed. And our running back does a really good job right there of getting his hand on the tight end, forcing the block. If number six had blocked the outside linebacker like he was supposed to, we would never have gotten tackled right there. But you can kind of see how it looks. Gap down backer, pull kick, double handoff. That's how we run it from normal. So if we call nothing, we just call counter. That's what it looks like. Okay. All right. Here's it. Here it is again. So same play. Gap down backer, gap down backer, gap down backer. Here's your pull kick, your pull wraps coming there. Receivers should be blocking here and blocking here because all we called was counter. No, uh, no RPO, no read, no anything special. So 64, I'll be working again to an inside backer. We ought to be blocking right here, block check, pull kick. He ought to be blocking inside right here, pull wrap. Okay, so I'll let it play, and then we'll kind of go through it slow again. That's just counter for us, nothing special. You see how even though the window is tight right there, because we're so close to our tight end, we squeeze through and make a play. Notice this is third and seven. Okay, third and seven, great time to run this. A lot of times we get those wide five techniques and just open it up for you. And I'll kind of walk, pause it here. So you see we do a pretty good job of getting the kick block. It's important right here. I wish he had run through him all the way, but he gets his uh, head on the right shoulder. Then 11 comes up through. 11 doesn't really even see the block. But what I want to point out, we're working that hurdle drill with 11 and 22, the running back. Notice how close he is right here. You know, he's so close to the tight end, he can push him into the block. 64 did a great job there of kind of sorting through and sifting through. Uh, to get to his block as well. Um, he works to the backside linebacker. You get that nice wall, pull kick, and then here we go. Okay, so, of course, we get the first down by design of the play. He gets the extra five or six because he's a pretty good ball player for us. But that's the normal way we run double handoff. Okay, so that's something you would see. You play a wing T team. So now we're going to get into some adjustments, and then we're going to look at the RPOs off of that today. So the first adjustment we're going to get, teams will do this, where they just load you up, okay? We love against man-to-man -man team, which this team is. Pretty obvious. He's got him. 
He's got him. Uh, one of these guys over here has the tight end. This guy has the running back. I think this guy's going to end up on the wing back. So if we get a team that's just going to load up on the line of scrimmage like this, or a team that's playing man-to-man, -man, this team's doing both, we'll run what we call a stay call. Stay tells the tight end to stay home. So the reason we're doing that is there's a blitzer up in here. Okay, so who he would be wrapping to block is not there anymore. There's no need to wrap him because the guy he was going to is showing up to blitz. Or he has a guy assigned to him in man-to-man -man coverage. So because of that, if we just keep him home by not running over there, he actually is blocking a guy. So let's say that this player right here is man-to-man -man on the tight end. If he's playing back here, which happens often, if we keep him home, this guy will stay home also. If you wrap him, a guy will run with him. So we call stay on this. It's the same blocking scheme for everybody, except we're only going to get a pull kick. So everybody's blocking gap down backer over here, pull kick, and everybody on this side is running step hinge. Right? And I'll show you later on how we kind of mix this with some other looks also. So just the stay, uh, stay call, you can see we get out there on the edge. The, the issue with the stay call, obviously you're not getting your wrapping tight end that you would like to get. But against teams that want to go bring the house against you, it's a nice, easy play for you. I also want to point out the reason I like this clip is it doesn't have to be dominant blocks on the backside. You watch our backside right here, we actually get pushed backwards, probably get pushed backwards almost four or five yards, which is why we teach our wing back to get depth. So as we kind of go slow, and I'll pause it here, when you look, we're getting whipped right here. We're getting whipped pretty bad right there, okay? But because of the blocking that we asked our guys to do, and he's five yards back, that's a successful block for us, okay? That's a successful block for us because all we're asking to do is make sure those guys do not get across their face. All right. Here it is now out of an empty look. I haven't gotten to RPOs yet, but now we're going to play around with formations. So now we're in what we would consider an empty look. We're going to run it normal so the blocking doesn't change. Again, as I get into all these flavors, they can kind of intimidate people, but the reality is we're not changing the blocking. So the only change on blocking we showed once was we had a stay call. Everything else is the same. So it's gap down backer, gap down backer, gap down backer. It's a forefront now. So now we're going to the one technique, which should be back blocking to the three. Step hinge, pull wrap, pull kick. Now, though, we're in empty. So the quarterback is simply going to hand the ball off here. All we've done is we've removed more guys from the box. So for us, we would just call this empty counter. So there's no RPO, no read. It's just empty counter. And we hand the ball off. And you see all we've done is we've tried to lower the box count. Okay, so instead of running at a double handoff, which is great for the deception, we like this look against this team because look what we have. We don't really consider this guy a problem. We, this guy should be getting blocked. But now we have, in my mind, we have almost a five-man box count with kind of a hinge player here. I'll go into the RPOs and how we fix that later. But you can kind of see what happens. It's just, we just empty the box out and give our guy a chance to make a play. So same play just out of empty. Same exact play, just out of empty. All right. So now from there, all of that stuff is no RPO. It's very easy. Okay. You have stay call, you have run out of empty, you could run it out of other sets. But we wanted to get into, all right, now how are we going to bl bl blend the RPO world with this stuff? The stuff that we like to do that we want to blend. So we have a couple versions. I'm going to walk through the last part of this presentation. So we will read with our quarterback like we read with him on a lot of other plays, the backside nine technique, if we go empty, we'll run a shuffle version. Instead of double handoff, we'll flip it underneath. Um, if you're concerned about the ball handling, you can do that. Or a lot of times teams will play man-to-man. -man. I'll walk through why we do that. And then we've got the whole triple option look uh, that we'll run with it. The great thing about all of these, as I go through them, is it doesn't change the blocking. So your linemen literally learn nothing. Your receivers just listen for any tag you might give them. The only guy who really has to know it is the quarterback. Okay? So the first one I'm going to walk through is a QB read. So we like to run this play out of empty. 
we get a nine technique that wants to chase or maybe a really aggressive outside linebacker and we'll read him. A lot of times we can tag this if we want to, we can have a three-way RPO. We can tag the twin side with a screen, like a now screen. The quarterback can throw based off of numbers. And we can tag the backside route. So if the quarterback does pull it, you have a route he can throw. And I'll walk through that. So here it is again. Same exact blocking scheme. Doesn't change anybody doing anything. The only difference is our quarterback is now going to read right here. So we would just want to run counter. We would call this empty counter read. And he would read the backside. Okay, so here's what it would look like. Here you go. We got empty, counter, and then we're going to read this defender. Okay, whatever that guy does, we're going to read him. Does not change our blocking. Okay, not change our blocking one point at all. Let it run all the way through. You can see the guy that we were reading actually kind of dropped into coverage. He does make the tackle but he makes a tackle after about a gain of 10 yards, which we're okay with. Okay, so this is our read. He backs up, our read backed up. We're gonna hand that ball off, okay? And now notice that was third and nine, and we picked up 10 yards, because all we did was we emptied their box, and we read the backside outside linebacker. The guys that would be problems, we're now reading. As he bails, we make the blocks, and we get it up inside, and so you can see, very simple play for us, okay? We can tag other things off of this. So if you'll watch at the top of the screen, our receiver's actually running kind of a hitch and go or a hitch route, he's looking for the ball. So we can tag that and give the quarterback kind of an outlet. And you'll see how that's gonna come into effect later on. All right, so here it is again. Different team, same blocking. Here's our read. There's the guy we cannot get blocked. So we're going to read him. So we're running a double handoff. Reading the aggressive outside linebacker who stayed home, we handed the ball off. Would have liked my running back to go underneath, but you know, it is what it is. Okay? But you can see we are reading backside outside linebackers. If they chase, we're gonna pull. He's sitting home, so we're gonna give it off. But what that does is it eliminates the chaser down the heel line who can become a big problem. Okay. All right, here it is again, same team. So this guy, we decided really wasn't going to make a play, but this guy was making some tackles. So we just moved our read to, okay, we want to read. I think it was, yeah, we wanted to read this player right here. We didn't feel this guy was going to make the tackle on our quarterback, so we read him. Then at the top of the screen, we're blocking. We had run a few now screens, but because of the numbers, they weren't there. So we just blocked with them. And then on, on the bottom of the screen, we run a hitch with our receiver. And we teach our receivers, if you don't catch the hitch right now, you turn it into a hitch and go. So now we're going to run counter, read, hitch. So all we've added, we've run empty, counter, read, and we've decided we're going to read him, hitch, with our receiver. Here's what it looks like when you actually run it all the way through. Pulls the ball off the read, makes the throw, a nice little play for us. Okay. It was pretty simple for us. We're going to run counter. Now, we would usually read this guy, but this guy had become a problem for us, so we read him. So counter read. Okay, we pull the ball, and then at this point, he has the hitch and the hitch and go off of it. He probably should have pulled this ball and run here if he was going to run, but he decided to throw, which is fine because we've got that option for him. All right, so that's the read game off of it. The next version we run is the shuffle version. So it's super complicated, I'm being sarcastic. We run uh, counter shuffle, that's all we call it. We love this play against man-to-man -man teams and often we will pair this with a stay call if we think they're in man-to-man -man for the reasons I mentioned earlier. The stay call will keep home that defensive back we like to run this a lot of times because if they're in man-to-man, -man, you're going to see how we take our running back and bubble him out of the backfield. We get a lot of guys flowing hard to the strong side, and then you shuffle it underneath. For those of you who maybe want to play around with this play and don't want to get into the double handoff, this is also a much safer version because technically it's a pass. You're passing the ball forward, so if you have ball handling issues, maybe it's raining that night or whatever, uh, you can kind of protect yourself. So here it is. We're going to run, we're in a different set, but we're running counter, stay, tells our tight end to stay, 
shuffle. So we're going to shuffle the ball to the wing. The shuffle tells our running back to run the option look this direction, and our quarterback's going to roll that way. Now, the reasoning behind this is this team is in man-to-man. -man. You can see them, man-to-man, man-to-man over here, man-to-man -man right there. They've got a guy accounting for our tight end and man, and they have one of these guys accounting for our running back and man. So when those guys all run that direction or the tight end blocks out, all of them are going to run the wrong direction, which is what we want. One other quick subtle thing that you can do, even if you don't want to run counter game, anytime we get man, we want to crack the safety with our receiver. So we feel like that guy's going to go with us anyway. So I don't like to just run him off. I want to try to get a two for one block. Go inside and block. He'll go with him. And I block two for one. But here it is. This is counter shuffle with a stay call. So counter shuffle. And you see what happens. The only guy that could tackle him was the guy that was in man-to-man -man on him. So a guy over here is in man-to-man -man on him. He runs with him. He's the only guy that saw the play coming. Okay? The other guys were in man and didn't see it coming. So here it is again later in the game. We told this guy, go block the guy who's on him. We figured out who's in man-to-man -man on him. You get the same look. Counter, shuffle with a stay call. It's nice and clean, nice and simple. I mean, you're, they're asking a guy who's in man-to-man -to, -man to run across the field with him. So all this for us would be counter, stay. You can see the blocks. Okay. We actually don't get great push. That's the point on this stuff. You don't have to get great push. You just have to seal them inside as long as your running back is getting decent depth on the counter. And you see the hole that opens up. Okay. And think about this. This guy's assigned man-to-man -man on the running back. He's assigned man-to-man -man on the tight end. So when you run this look, look at them. They take off the wrong direction. It's a nice, clean, easy play. And our linemen learn nothing new. They learned nothing new. All they learned was counter, and they know what a stay call is. So it did not adjust for them at all. Okay? No RPO, nothing special on it, just another flavor of running the same look. It would be counter, stay, shuffle. All right. I think the final one I'm going to walk through, guys, is triple option. So this is the same flavor of counter on the blocking. Blocking does not change. We like to run this a lot against 3-4 teams. Because the conflict player is the outside linebacker to the quick side because he's got to play your twins and he's got to play the run. And it's tough for him to figure out what he wants to do. And generally, we get that defensive end in a four eye who wants to play inside of our tackle. And so we're going we're gonna to read the outside linebacker with a bubble, which basically becomes a version of a pitch kind of. Quarterback will run at that. He can throw the bubble if the linebacker doesn't go with it. The linebacker goes with the bubble, okay, then we're going to look at the run or the fit. So here is drawn up. We like to run out of empty. You don't have to. You could run it with the running back back here. We prefer to run it out of empty. So the first read for us is right here. We're going to run a bubble. If that guy goes with the bubble, we're obviously not going to throw it. We're looking to run with the quarterback or if some type of spin happens, some kind of secondary player decides he's going to come down and roll down and take your quarterback, we have the outlet for him with the shuffle. So our line, again, this would be for us, this would be counter, okay, bubble, read. That's all we would call it, okay? The quarterback just knows this is what we're reading. Our receivers know what a bubble is, and our line knows what counter is. So all you're doing is tagging on different looks. This will be the final one I think I've got for you guys, but we run this as many flavors as we can. So counter, bubble, and then the read is here. So 32 becomes the read for us. If he goes with the bubble, which by alignment, he's kind of there, then we know we're not going to throw it, and we're going to look to run. And if we get anybody here that decides to run down at us, we'll pitch the ball underneath on the counter. Okay, So here it comes. Oh, let me go back here. Sorry, guys. I'll let it run all the way through, and then I'll get it. So here it comes. The guy runs with a bubble. We get attacked from the inside linebacker on the quarterback. We just shuffle it underneath. It's a nice, clean, easy play. Let me go slow so you can kind of see the read. Okay. So here we come. Quarterback knows the bubble is killed pretty much immediately. As soon as that guy kind of turns his head, you see 32 here. He turns his head. We know we're not throwing bubble now. 
Okay, so now we have counter blocking going on here. Okay, we would have preferred 23, he didn't block that guy. We wanted to actually kick him, but he did, so we'll just move to the next level. Okay. Here comes quarterback. We have a pressure, so he's looking to run. At this point, he should be looking to run. We tell him if any of these guys or the linebacker spills over top, then we're just going to shuffle it underneath like we do right there. Okay. Nice, clean, simple, easy play. Again, our linemen learn nothing new, okay, and we get what we want. Now, 23 right there should have been blocking somebody different. But it lets you know one of the cool things about RPOs is even if you screw the blocking up, a lot of times they still will work. Okay. Just the last thing I want to come to is show you that we take this same premise and we're going to work it inside of every part of our offense. So now we're in what we consider to be a heavy look. This is one of our packages, heavy. And we're going to run a heavy counter. Okay. Counter, our guard, the same guard that always pulls, is going to pull kick. And now we're going to take one of our up backs and he's going to be the wrap guy, and then you'll see the double handoff happen. Okay, so for us, it's the same play. We're in heavy, counter. You get a pull, you get the handoff, you get the same exact look you would have had before. It was a nice, clean, easy play for us. The goal for me today was to go through and show you guys the different ways you could run the same play. That was, to me, I wanted to show you guys, hey, this is the way uh, you can run the same exact play and get the most what I'd consider bang for your buck, okay? Uh, if you've got questions, which I'm sure I had to kind of move relatively quickly because I wanted to get through all of it on how to run the play, feel free to reach out to me. This is actually my cell number, uh, my email. I'm on Twitter as well, and then I've actually got a website with more resources there if you want those. But I appreciate you guys giving me the time and the opportunity to speak to you guys. And I know right now, is not a fun time to be a coach with all the uncertainty that's, that's going on. Uh, but hopefully you're, you're making the best of it and getting prepared for when that time comes when hopefully we can be back on the field. Uh, you know, I, I know down here in Arkansas, we're still waiting and hoping to hear good news. And I know you guys probably are uh, up that direction as well.